welcome to the Luce and Dolly Show. I'm Luce. And I am Dolly. And today we have two very special guests with us. We have Robert Perkins and his mother, Dr. Jeannie Perkins. Welcome, welcome to welcome. our show. Thank, Thank you, you for welcome. having us. Thank you so much Thank for you being very much. here. We are very excited, mm -hmm. Luce. Yeah, we, we have uh, many things that we share with you audience members, like Dolly likes to call you. Uh, just to share that there is so much out there that we are unaware that can assist us in so many ways. And Dr. Jeannie Perkins is an audiologist that uh, is where I take Grandpa for his hearing aids. And we started talking and sharing, and she shared this very, very nice story about her son, very powerful, impactful. She had me at the edge of my seat just wanting more. And then it dawned on me, we'd love to bring this story to the Lucent Dolly Show so we can share with you. So, um, Dr. Jeannie, would you be kind enough to share with the audience to let them know a little bit of, uh, of Robert and how life started and, and the story your, your story? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Robert was about two or three years old when I noticed that there was something wrong with him. Um, he didn't learn like everybody else did. And so that started my pursuit into trying to help him with with his learning. And um, when he was 10, he was uh, diagnosed with schizophrenia. That came after a hospitalization. And then after that, I tried to learn as much as I could about schizophrenia so that I could assist him in learning how, how the brain works. Mm -hmm. And people with schizophrenia, the neural pathways are not the same as they are for normal people. So like when you're learning material, most people can go from point A to point B, but in Robert's case, he has to go from point A to point C to point D to point F to point B. So it really takes him a lot more effort to learn new material, but over the years, we figured out what kind of accommodations are helpful for him, and um, I've been his advocate for forever, and I have also taught Robert how to be his own advocate yeah. mm -hmm. on how to ask for services so wow. that he can go through school. That's wow. powerful. I, I, I'm curious though, so at the age of two and three, you started noticing some differences, something that was off for you. Right. And and what was it that made you to start looking into the doctor? What, what was that one thing that said, no, something he, is definitely wrong? He would cry at everything. And I would <clears throat> talk to his doctor about it. And he says, well, you know, some kids just cry more than others. And I said, but he doesn't learn like other people do. And he says, well, you can't compare him with your older daughter, you know? Okay. Boys learn different than girls. And then when he came home from kindergarten, he was five years old, we had had to put our dog down, his little peaty dog. It was um, a Yorkie. Aww. And Robert came home and said to me, he said, um, Mommy, you're really smart. He says, can you tell me how I can kill myself so I can be with Petey? Oh, oh, oh that just gave me chills. So I called his pediatrician. I said, I don't know <sighs> about you, but I think I'm a five-year-old who's depressed. <laughs> And then we wow. started our, we started journey. our journey. Okay. Our journey. Wow. You had mentioned wow. um, mm -hmm, an aside conversation <coughs> regarding an individual that mentioned something to you regarding Robert at 10. Would you care to share Right. That so when he was diagnosed with schizophrenia at the age of 10, we were told <coughs> that Robert has a very serious illness and that the best course of action would be to put him in a residential home and because eventually the medicines will stop working and hopefully um, when that happens he'll only kill himself and nobody else okay and, uh, see, see, I just I just have to stop there. hopefully is what you were said hopefully when that happens he will only kill himself correct at 10 admitting that he would end up doing that <clears throat> and didn't want to take anyone else so that's to that's let horrible. you know that that was what she was told when he was 10. He is 29 years young and an amazing, amazing young man that has done so much. And I'd love to share 
I want you to hear how he's right. Let's, and let's, what he's doing. let's move That's 19 a, years forward. Yes, 19, you fast are, forward 19 years. Yeah, you're 29 years old Love now, you, and and you have transformed your life yes. with your family, with your amazing mother who decided to be your advocate. And you said, "Come on, mom, let's bring it. We're gonna take on the world." And you have done things for yourself that you probably are surprised that you have been able to accomplish. So would you please share with us? And yet accomplishing. Yes. yes. Yeah. <clears throat> that middle camera, just talk to them and let them know where you are today. Well, I started going to National Lewis, I want to say, a couple of years ago. National um, Lewis University. Yes. 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 National okay. In Chicago, University. right <clears throat> across from the Art Institute. I have to take the Metro, mm -hmm. Rock Island, from Hickory Creek to LaSalle Street. From there, I would either walk to school or if it's a cold day like, you know, yesterday, I would take the brown line to Abs of Wabash, get off there, walk to school. And if it was so cold out, I'd take the pink line back to LaSalle Street. Um, my goal in life is to help kids with special needs like myself. <laughs> and one thing that really helped me <clears throat> when I was at the other school was to know that I wasn't the only one going through this, that these battles other people were fighting or have fought. Mm -hmm. And me for me, my goal is to take what I've n learned and to really not just help kids, but to let them know that, you know, there are people out there that not only care, wow. but are walking and have walked down the road. You have walked. Oh, I, I love that. So the O School, for people who don't know, um, is the Sonia Shankman Orthogenic School, and it's a residential school for kids who have emotional disorders. So he was in a residential school for six years. And typically, um, <clears throat> any kids that are put in residential and are there for more than three years, um, the chances of them going back into the community and transitioning into a normal lifestyle is greatly reduced. And he was there for six years. He was there for six years. You so you meant to be doing what you're doing. <coughs> Sorry, Dolly. Sorry. I'm just so excited. I've never, however, I mean, I've never wanted people to self-pity me. I would, instead of pitying what happened to me over the years or mm -hmm. feeling bad, I wish people would take what I've done <clears throat> and try to apply it to other people or help them, you know, learn from yes. my mistakes and from what I've succeeded. I think you're amazing. I think you're amazing. Robert, if I may ask, I, I know you have shared some details um, with us off camera, and one of the things that you mentioned was a situation that took place at the age of 19. Would you be okay sharing that experience with our audience? Of course. Um, I was <clears throat> hospitalized. Should I mention the name? No. You don't have to All know. Right. <laughs> I was put in a psychiatric hospital <clears throat> at the age of 19 for a suicide attempt. I was there for about, I want to say, like seven or eight days. During that time, the doctors took me off all my psychiatric meds, <laughs> put me on some heavy sed sedating drugs. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was sexually assaulted twice and nearly died from not being on my medicines. Wow. You know, people that don't, for people who don't know, with the meds you're on, if you discontinue them abruptly, that can literally kill you. It's like, as my doctor Leventhal mm -hmm. told me, it's like being in the Sahara Desert and jumping into the Arctic Ocean. Your body can't handle that right. rapid of a change, and that alone could have killed me. But <clears throat> the doctors decided to do that while you were there. Yes, and yeah. because I was so heavily sedated, I was barely able to keep my health, barely able to not suffocate from my attacker because I was so heavily sedated. I'm oh. so sorry that you went through that. Yeah. I'm so, so sorry. sorry. Uh, Thank you for sharing. I know yeah. that's such a personal, difficult thing, yeah. and it causes, uh, you know, things like a PTSD, et cetera, yeah. but you are yeah. such a brave, amazing man, and we're just so grateful Thank to you. you for being so open, wanting to <laughs> share that, to show our <clears throat> audience and anyone out there that we can overcome issues and situations that we've been through in our lives and that no matter what they say, you're gonna be or not gonna be when you grow up, you and your family 
helps you get you, through that. Well, and if I may add, mm -hmm. you know, Dr. Jeannie here, you know, she said I was not willing to give up on my no. son at the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And I applaud you, I mean, for being such a strong and I loving like mother mm -hmm. and to love him so much regardless of what the world thought of him so that you mm -hmm. can help him reach his best potential. And I think yes. that is so amazing. And yes. I, I mean, that's a mother's love. Yes. That's truly yes. a mother's love. So yes. I applaud you with all my heart mm -hmm. and soul. Because, wow, what a team. And, and yeah. Robert, honestly, I am so proud of you. I just met him today. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just met I today. <clears throat> and I am just so amazingly proud. It's like, yeah. I, I'm like, oh, I, I just want to squeeze him. My you? therapist. Would you care to share? <clears throat> Something with, uh, with yeah. the audience before we go? Yeah, on. my therapist, Pat Jerzyman, who passed away a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. once told me, you can't change the card you're dealt in life. Mm -hmm. You can, though, change or <clears throat> decide how to play that hand. Yes. yes. That's powerful. That's awesome. So, that is a lifelong. And when did you graduate uh, college? I graduated in December of 2019. And with what? Uh, University. My, what degree? With my degree in psychology and my minor in criminal justice. Yes. So, Mom, yes. do you think that he still has a learning disability? <laughs> well, he does, but I mean, <laughs> but he's able to learn. He's able to learn. He's exactly. able to learn. So, stops us right amount of accommodations. You know what? It's all if this, yes. if this gentleman has gone through what he has gone yes. through, and Mom and the family have been there to support him, mm -hmm. I ask you to actually, you, my audience members, to actually mm -hmm. look at yourself and see what is holding you back. What is holding you back? Um, is it uh, your mindset? Is it your choices? Mm -hmm. Is it the priorities in your life. I think that it's truly important for everyone to understand that everything that happens in our life is the choices that we have made um, moving forward, you know, from that point and moving yeah. forward. So you are where you are because of the choices that you have made. And you get to make those changes. You get to live <clears throat> your life to its fullest and grateful to family and friends because he has friends that are so close to him that assist him in this long journey. We all have that. So make sure that you too reach out and Latch on to that and know that you are capable of doing it all, all of it. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you thank so much, you. everyone, for joining us today.